Good morning and welcome to our online service on this Sunday, the 24th of December. It's Christmas Eve, in case you hadn't realised, and that means, very excitingly, there's only one more day to go until Christmas. Thank you for tuning in to this service. With the timing of Christmas this year, with it Christmas Day being on a, on a Monday, we made, a, and the Christingle service this afternoon, we made a decision a few months back to have an online service for this Sunday morning. And it's a strangely nostalgic experience as I sit here in front of this camera recording this piece. I think back to that time in 2020 during the pandemic when we did this week in, week out for a number of months. And, you know, looking back, I'm so thankful for how God brought us through that time as a church and for all that he taught us through it. You know, I think looking back that time during lockdown in 2020, it was very much a time of waiting, waiting for our situation to change, waiting for an announcement, waiting for the freedom that we hoped um, an announcement would bring. And perhaps for, for some of us, it was an enforced rest, a time to, to really stop running around and to have time to reflect on what really matters. The people of Israel were in a time of waiting before the birth of Jesus, waiting for the coming Messiah, waiting for the good news, waiting for the promised king, waiting for the promised new life that the Messiah would bring. But they had to wait. And as they waited, God spoke into the darkness. I hope that this short service will be for, for all of us, a time to stop and pause amidst the, the busyness of the, of the preparations, to wait on God, to listen for his good news, and to meet with him. So let's pray as we prepare to meet with God now. Father God, help us now to be still and to know that you are God. Prepare our hearts to wait for you, to worship you, to welcome you into our hearts. May you be honoured as we spend this time, wherever we are, praising you and listening to your word. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing now a version of O Come All Ye Faithful, which Chloe Rook arranged for us with various members of the church taking part a couple of years ago. And then Jackie Clough will bring us an Old Testament reading, which announces the coming King. So let's sing together.
The reading is from Micah chapter 5 verses 1 to 5. A promised ruler from Bethlehem. Marshal your troops now, city of troops, for a siege is laid against us. They will strike Israel's ruler on the cheek with a rod. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labour bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. Well, thank you, Jackie. Today is very much a time of celebration as we look forward to what we have to celebrate tomorrow. We do hope that you can join us tomorrow morning for our Christmas Day celebration service at 10.15. We're now going to sing a, a very happy song that we've done the past few years on Christmas Day. I thought we might need a bit of a recap, a bit of a practice for tomorrow. So we're going to sing it now and then we'll sing Ding Dong Merrily on High. So this song is Happy Day. This is a song that you need to make some noise to. So grab your keys, grab a saucepan, wooden spoon, whatever you can find. Um, let's bang or shake whatever we have and make some joyful noise to God as we celebrate.
Thank you for joining us in singing from wherever you are. That last carol was put together by the churches uh, together in High Wycombe across the town in 2020 during the COVID pandemic. We're now going to go over to the Braithwaite family uh, to their home as they lead us in prayers this morning. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, your gift at Christmas. Thank you for sending him to be the light of the world and our saviour. Thank you for our family and for the opportunity to spend time together. Thank you for the people you bring into our lives. Please comfort those who are feeling lonely. Thank you. We pray for all those who are in need today in High Wycombe and other places. Thank you that you care and please meet their needs for food, shelter, clothes and all else that they need. We pray for people who are ill. Please help them and be with them. Please make them better. Thank you that you came Jesus to bring God's peace to this dark world full of sin. Please bring peace and an end to war in all the places around the world where there is conflict. We thank you for your word, the Bible, where you speak to us of your love and your amazing plan to enable us to be part of your family. May we love and worship you this Christmas. Amen. Amen.
As a church, it's wonderful to be connected to a number of mission partners around the world. These people are working to, to grow God's kingdom in various places. We support these mission partners through our prayers and financially, but in many ways, these mission partners support us by encouraging us and teaching us about what God is doing around the world. And in many ways that inspires us uh, in, the own, in, the, in our mission that God has called us to locally here in High Wycombe. Now we're very blessed this morning to be joined by the McNulty family who are working with WEC in Australia. You may remember that the McNulty's were with us earlier in the year while they were here on home assignment and Matt preached back in October. Well now it's Rachel's turn and we're really grateful that she's going to share a Christmas message with us in just a moment. But before she shares with us, we're gonna hear from the whole family uh, an update and some greetings. Over to the McNulty's. Hey everybody, Matt, Rachel and Jack McNulty here just to say Merry Christmas. Can you say Merry Christmas? Merry. Yeah. yeah, Merry Christmas. We hope you're all doing well. It was great to see you earlier on in the year. Um, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for all your continued support, all your continued prayers. Um, yeah, thank you and we hope you have a great time. It's only one more sleep to Christmas, so no doubt that's what we're all thinking about. Now we might like to think that the part of Christmas we're focused on is celebrating Jesus' birth, but most likely what's pushing on our minds is the practicalities of tomorrow. What food needs sorting, the timings of the day, making it to Christmas lunch on time, are the presents wrapped, have we forgotten to buy anything, can we make it to the shops, or if you're facing Christmas by yourself, you might be consumed by trying to decide what that means, what do you bother doing? What does it look like? Christmas in our culture may well have started as a Christian celebration. But in reality now for Christians, is a mixture of a cultural celebration where we spend time with family and friends, sharing the joy of gift giving, enjoying particular foods and all the other aspects that we have created to make Christmas feel like Christmas to us. But it is also time to celebrate Jesus and to remember his birth and all that that means for us for those around us, and for the whole world. So amidst everything else that's going on right now, we're just going to take some time to pause and focus on Jesus, on Jesus as a baby come to dwell among us. I'm going to read from the Bible from Luke 2, 4 to 14. So Joseph also went out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Have you ever stopped to wonder why a baby? Why did God come to earth as a baby? I mean, for the sake of efficiency, really Jesus could have just appeared around age 30, done his few years in ministry, died, rose again, ascended to heaven, you know, job done. But more often than not, God is not about efficiency. He's about relationship. We can see that Jesus coming as a baby fulfilled what was spoken before about the Messiah by the prophets as it says in Matthew 1.22. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus' birth and the events surrounding it show him to fulfill the prophecy in the Old Testament that he is the Messiah, the one promised in advance, the one who would save the world. However, since it was God who spoke these prophecies through his people, God prophesied about how he was intending to send the Messiah so that people could recognise him for who he was. 
So God could have prophesied not about the baby, but about a full-grown man appearing or about however else God wanted it to happen. But God chose a baby, a newborn, tiny, helpless baby whose birth was surrounded in controversy, yet within this baby, the fullness of God dwelt. Jesus being born as a baby meant that he had a background, a past, family, childhood memories, friendships, acquaintances. He learned to trade, he worked, he cared for others. He had joyful as well as painful experiences. He moved country and lived among various people. He learned the law, he went to the temple. He did all the normal things that a boy growing up in his era and area would have done. All of this shows us Jesus's humanity. He was fully human. While he was not alive, that was never in debate. No one ever questioned that he was an actual person. Actually, his humanity and knowing him as a person or knowing his family or where he was from was more of a stumbling block to some, as he was so fully human that as he started his ministry and showed himself as the Messiah, some struggled to believe it. Jesus' life and humanity makes him relatable. No doubt today or tomorrow some of us will experience some family tension or squabbles for whatever reason. Jesus likewise would have experienced some family tension and squabbles over the years. Being born as a baby, going through childhood into adulthood, Jesus had many formative experiences. People who influenced him and taught him things, friendships and interactions with others. Jesus knows and understands what it is to be human. Firstly, as creator, but also as the one who chose to live as part of his creation. Jesus was fully human and fully God, and yet as a baby was fully dependent on others. Not sure how many times this Christmas Eve when you sung your song away in a manger. And therefore, the line in it that says, the baby Jesus, no crying, he makes. I'm pretty sure, though, that we can assume baby Jesus did cry. He cried as an adult, so he really would have cried as a baby. Jesus was an actual baby, and actual babies cry. Initially, it's their only real form of communication to get their needs met by those they are dependent on. Babies are entirely dependent on their carers. So the creator of all things, the one who spoke the world into existence, he was fully dependent on his creation, on his mother and father. Jesus knew what it was to be dependent on others, not just as a baby even. He was dependent in learning all the things that children learn. He was dependent on learning the skill of carpentry from his father. In ministry, he worked with others, not alone. We see from Jesus' prayer life throughout the Bible and from what he taught that he was also dependent on his heavenly father. This is strongly shown when towards the end of his life in the Garden of Gethsemane, after much prayer and wrestling, Jesus is able to say to his heavenly father, yet not as I will, but as you will. Such was Jesus' dependence on his heavenly father and trust in him, that even with the weight and pain of what he knew was coming, he was able to remain dependent and fully trusting his heavenly father. Remembering Jesus as a baby, knowing his dependence on his family and others as he grew and went into ministry, seeing the example he lived and taught of dependence on our heavenly father. All this should remind us of our own need to be dependent. We are made as Jesus was, to be interdependent with others, as we live and work together and to be dependent on God in all that we do as we walk humbly with him. So while we all enjoy the cultural ways that we get to celebrate Christmas today, tomorrow and in the coming days, let's also remember to celebrate Jesus, to be amazed and overjoyed at his humanity and his deity, to be grateful that God had this plan of sending Jesus and that Jesus had the willingness and dependence on his heavenly father to live it out and to die and rise again so that we can be reconciled with God and so that ultimately all things can be reconciled to God and restored. Let us remember not just the dependence on God for our salvation, but also our dependence on God for living out our day-to-day -day lives as we follow him and bear witness to who he is to others so that their joy might be complete in knowing Jesus. Let's just pray together. Father God, we just thank you that you are a good heavenly father. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you that you chose to fully dwell with your creation. Lord, we thank you for your humility. We thank you for the example 
that we see in your life here, Lord God, in your death, in your resurrection. And Lord, we thank you that we have this time of year to mark your birth. Lord God, we call it to mind throughout the year, but specifically at this time. Lord, help us to do that, Lord. Help us to know you well, to love you well, and to follow you well. And Lord, I just thank you that we get to spend time celebrating that together, Lord God, and later with family and friends and others around us. Lord God, may we do well at celebrating you. God, may we do well at showing your love to those that we meet at this time of year and that we spend time with. Lord, we thank you that you loved your world so much that you sent your son. In your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Do feel free to, to share the link for this service with your friends and family members. This afternoon we have our Christingle service at 4pm. It's a great time for families and children especially as we act out the nativity and make our own Christingles. Now remember this service has to be booked online because the spaces are very limited. So if you would like to come along, please do have a look online and see if there are any places left. Tomorrow, as I mentioned, we have a Christmas Day celebration. It's at 10.15 at the Hub. You don't need to pre-book for this one, so do please come along and celebrate with us. The following week, we'll have a morning service on the Sunday the 31st of December, to which everyone is welcome. There won't be children's activities at that service in order to give the leaders a break, but there will be some activity packs for the children to do as part of their worship during the service. Let me say a final prayer as we end our time together this morning. Heavenly Father, this Christmas season we are reminded of all the wonderful gifts that you have blessed us with, especially the gift that Christ is to the world and to each one of us. It can be so easy to get caught up in this busy season of Christmas that we forget to soak our hearts in the real reason for, for this season. Jesus, your Son, is that reason. And as we prepare for Christmas tomorrow, I ask that you would prepare our hearts to fill them with gratitude for what the birth of Jesus really signifies. Please help us to put aside the, the details of gifts, dinners and schedules that might distract us, but help us to, to set our hearts on Jesus and him alone. May our hearts be filled with the joy that Jesus has brought into the world and honour him in our thoughts and deeds. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I look forward to celebrating Christmas with you. God bless.
floor. 